Here on the Berkshire side, uh, we are going to drive out each of our second place boars. And again, we'd ask, uh, because of the aggression level of some of these boars, that you kind of drive them out and make a turn and then come back into your pen so not only uh, our judge can evaluate them, but you potential bidders and buyers uh, there as well. So we're going to do that in each of our classes. We have the second place boar out of class one. 138-2, Ashley Harvest. Ashley's boar is sired by BFS5 Stash, 11-6, and farrowed on the 26th day of January. 1.47, 0.49 back fat with a 6.3 loin eye. From Sonman, Illinois, the Harf Spore, second in class one. We have the second place boar out of class two. Entry number 148-2. Knight Genetics of Armstrong, Illinois, sired by HH5 Monopoly 27-3, farrowed on the 15th day of January, 1.76 weight per day of age, 0.65 back fat with a 7-3 loin eye. The Knight Boar, second in class two. Our second place boar out of class three, Entry number 148-1, Knight Genetics of Armstrong, Illinois. Sired by HH5, two-tone, 215.3. Farrowed on the 10th day of January, 1.89 weight per day of age, 0.84 back fat with a 7.7 seven loin eye. Knight, 148-1, second in class three. Our second place four out of class four, Entry number 145-1, Jackson family of Danville, Indiana, NNMS4 drinking class, farrowed on the second day of January, 1.63 weight per day of age, 0.60 back fat with an 8-inch loin eye, Jackson, second in class 4. Our second place four out of class 5. Entry number 100-4, Albright Swine Farm at Coldwater, Michigan. HH5 Monopoly 27-3 is a sire. Farrowed the 20th day of December. 1.75 weight per day of age, 0.97 back fat with a 7-6 loin eye. Albright, class two, or class five, second in class five. And then we have the second place four out of class six. Entry number 133-1, Joe Gleason of Maple Hill, Kansas. Sire by WTX6, keep talking, 48-2. Farrowed on the second day of December. 1.14 weight per day of age, 0.49 back fat with a 7-6 loin eye. Gleason, second out of class six. Let's give a nice hand to those exhibitors. Had their second place boars in an extremely tough and very competitive Berkshire summer type conference here in Springfield, Illinois. We're now going to drive out each of our class winners. We have the winner out of class number one, 208-2, Larry and Janet White of Knightstown, Indiana, sire by WTX5, whatever it takes, for the 26th day of January, 1.22 weight per day of age, a 0.37 back fat with a 6.2 loin eye. White, the winner of class one. Class two winner, entry number 184-1, Reynolds family at Lebanon, Indiana. Sired by ABF5, Smoke and Mirrors. Pair of the 20th day of January, 1.59 weight per day of age, 0.55 back fat, with an 8-8 eight, eight, loin eye. Reynolds, the winner of class two. Class three winner, entry number 203-1. Trogdon Show Pigs at Paris, Illinois. Sire by WTX5, whatever it takes. For the 10th day of January, 1.60 weight per day of age, 0.58 back fat, 7-2 loin eye, Trogdon, the winner of class three. Class four winner, entry number 147-1, Colton Knoth, 
Milford, Illinois, Sarba TPSP 5 Scandal 17-1, carried on January the 1st, 1.76 weight per day of age, 0.66 back fat with an 8-1 loin eye. The Knoth bore the winner of Class 4. Class 5 winner, entry number 149-1, Austin Lane, Sprigville, Iowa. Sired by NNMS5, I for an I, 9-3. Farrowed on Christmas Eve, 1.58 weight per day of age, 0.48 back fat with a 9-8 loin eye. Lane, the winner of Class 5. And our Class 6 winner from Winnemac, Indiana, Brandon Davis, 127-1. Sired by NNMS6 Wolfpack 6 3. Pharaoh December the 16th, 1.55 weight per day of age, 0.76 back fat with an 8 3 loin eye. Davis, the winner of class 6. Another excellent uh, board class here on the Hereford side, and once again, between first and second, depends on how you want to use these boards. There we are. There we're back. Taking a nap. Well, as we finish up here, we've uh, had a lot of fun here today, Will. Yes. We picked on a lot of these breeders. Yes. I don't apologize for that. It was quite fun. That's what I'm good at. But in all seriousness, I would like to commend all the breeders here today. I think just an excellent set of hogs to look through. And in all seriousness, a great set to watch. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun to watch these hogs come through. Absolutely. I mean, I didn't get to watch much ringside last year for showing, showing in this thing. But this, I think this set of boards is... Is every bit as deep, probably deeper than that set last year, even. So yeah. That's saying yeah. that's thing sure saying something. So. Yeah, it's hard to compare, a, you know, any one particular hog to another, or whatever you want to do there. But I think, you know, just show depth wise, I think it's uh, uh, quite a bit better depth wise than last year. Um, tremendous set of boars and females both. You don't always get uh, lucky enough to have that either. So. No. Mr. Hogue's done a great job, an uh, efficient job, a yet thorough job working through this great set. Look forward to what he's got to, to say about these boars when he comes back to the mic. Yes, it be a fun, fun position to be in to get to look at that many good ones, that much depth, and uh, the opportunities for the breed going forward look tremendous. Different, uh, different bloodlines utilized out here. And, uh, I mean, people helping people. Berkshire Breeders bringing good hogs out here for other Berkshire people to use, and everybody exactly. wins. Exactly. Makes this thing makes this thing good and fun long term for this Berkshire breed. The stability of this breed is phenomenal. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... Uh, and I think from last year, you know, just the, what I've noticed, the structure and the integrity of these hogs has really improved just these these hogs can get out here and flat move but yet they've kept that bone and that and kept looking them made them made them prettier but yet kept that stoutness and that uh, build that the burks are known for so yep. it's been kind of a, a neat thing to do and as a judge you don't always get to work through this kind of quality and no and no. even though it's challenging to sort through when you got eight really good boards in a class, but it's also exciting and a lot of fun. So I'm sure Mr. Hogue's having a great time out there. Yep. Nope, I've had fun with you, Bursey. I'm even surprised that we've agreed on some pigs. I know. Kind of concerns me. I'm going to go home and start shipping <laughs> some sows now. It has been fun. Look for the... Uh, Uncensored version of this broadcast coming out here in a couple of weeks on CD probably. Yeah, we're on, uh, we're on behind the scenes outtakes, yes, such things like that. Yes, the outtakes. <laughs> we are, I think, we are on a 30 second delay, so some yeah. of this has gotten edited. Everybody's resting their boards except for old Hawaii Five O is out there driving like a champion. Yep. 
Mr. Knoth is about ready to fall over, it looks like. <laughs> he's ready for his shower and a nap. His shirt is now, he's officially soaked to his shirt now. He's I don't know if we'll have a chance to come back to the mic, so if we don't, peace out. Lentant. Love you. Uh, to have Mark Hogue uh, step into the ring and evaluate uh, your Berkshire seed stock this year. You know, you've heard Mark up a, a talk a couple times here today about uh, the fact that he and his dad and his son sat over there in the corner, and I, I remember exactly what seat you were in that day when you guys were bidding on uh, Berkshire Gilts and uh, kind of laid a foundation for what they're trying to do and, uh, and what they're putting together. And folks, anytime you have folks of the caliber of the Hogue family that get involved in your breed, it's a good thing. And when you have someone of the pure talent that Mark Hogue has to step into the ring to evaluate your livestock, to evaluate your breeders, and to physically go through the process of not only thinking uh, what he would do with his Berkshires, but how to make Berkshires better. You've heard him make those comments here today, and you folks that have had the opportunity to travel and, and be with him and, and be taught and, and, and uh, tutored by Mark understand his pure passion for good livestock and his passion uh, for this industry. And so you've witnessed that here today. Hopefully you've certainly learned some things that you can take back and apply in your breeding program and use those talents tomorrow to make those decisions. But folks, let's show our sincere appreciation here on the Berkshire side to Mark Hogue for the job that he's done evaluating your summer type conference. Awesome job. Thank you, Kevin. And as we come to the close of the Boar Show, you have to realize that this was, a, uh, for me personally, probably uh, a recipe for disaster because uh, last year, Dad judges the Berkshires. It was an incredible set of boars. Uh, they set records in terms of sales. Uh, he just uh, judging a great set of Hereford boars over there, and here I come. And I, I've been, uh, uh, you know, that's, uh, I guess, uh, how I've been raised in the livestock industry. The number of times that I've heard and been picked up at the airport at different places in the country and says, your dad is the grandest gentleman ever, and your dad is this and that and all of the above, and they don't ever say that about me. So I got a call to judge the Berkshires, and obviously nobody's going to say no. This is, this is the pinnacle. Uh, this is the NASCAR, the Super Bowl, the Berkshire shows. So I wasn't going to say no, but at the same token, I'm like, record sales last year. He did a nice job. His boards have generated that he used. It, it, the sale lineup fit together very well. And then here I come. <clears throat> so a uh, little nervous this morning, needless to say, as we, uh, I had to go actually buy a t-shirt, get my jeans starched yesterday at a dry cleaner in town and get my ducks in a row because we've been showing a lot of livestock uh, and stepped in the ring today. And I want to make sure that our gilts represented what a, what a Berkshire female needed to. There's breeding pieces within that Berkshire guild offering that maybe weren't first or second, maybe were fourth or fifth. There's a very, very deep set. I don't know why I got into Berkshire boar ring and I told you earlier, my favorite things to tour boars, not besides family, uh, is make boar tours. I love it. I love to look at sow herds. I love to talk to breeders. And I want to make sure that we can make hogs better uh, regardless of breed. And so we get out here, and I think the boar show, and I'm, I'm very, very serious and sincere when I say there's not going to be two high-selling boars that are champion or reserve or a fifth in class. There are literally Berkshire boars in some of these classes that are in three through seven that have real, real breeding value. I find it interesting as I listen to Kevin talk about growth rate, talk about scan figures, talk about where they're at in back fat and loin eye. I'm, it makes me nervous because I want to do what's right for the Berkshire breeders and I want to represent them as a firm very well. Uh, you know, we've got some boars that, that need to be used heavily that have a 1-1 one, one or a 1-2, wait per day of age. I'm not sure every Berkshire boar in America needs to grow like that, but hey, it's called breeding pieces and it's called a puzzle. And those of you that are the smartest and have the most vision and study the hardest at putting the pieces of the puzzle together make the next generation better. And so the only advice I have for you when you go back and talk as breeders and talk as boar stud owners and talk as families of where you want your program to go, I think it would be a waste of your time to critique my ability of can you believe Hogue did this or can you believe Hogue did that? Trust me, it's a waste of your time. 
Focus on what you like about these hogs. Focus on your sow herds. Don't worry about what I said today. You have the confidence and convictions to make Berkshires the way you want to make them for your family, for your firm, and for your program. Trust me, you will be miles ahead more so than worrying about what I said. My comments hopefully were sincere. I hope they were accurate. And I really hope that you see the value that I see in multitudes of these different breeding hogs out here today. If you would, please. I'm not going to talk to hogs. I've talked too much already today. Put your hands together. It's a wicked set of Berkshire boars. These guys should be proud of. Congratulations to the Trogdon Show Pig Firm on that champion, the winner of Class 3 from Paris, Illinois, 203-1. Sorry, but WTX5, whatever it takes. We now need that second place entry into the ring, 148-1 from Knight Genetics at Armstrong, Illinois. Sired by HH5 Two-Tone, 215-3 into the ring to show for reserve champion. Reserve Grand Champion Boar is a winner out of Class 1, Larry and Janet White of Knightstown, Indiana, sired by whatever it takes, Nathan Day in the Sulky. Congratulations to those winners. Great Berkshire show.